Okay. And then uh, camera. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Bruno, I just want you to inform me that you are just in the camera. So if okay, you want so to just get out of here. No, get just a, here. just a couple of centimeters, oh. just because the auto focus otherwise it will be okay. That's no, just say move away, bro. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll sit over there so I, so I can I can get up to the pictures. Right. Okay. So this one transition. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna be seen. Let's let's move this away from here. So no one wants. DJ. You can't do you. No. Okay. Okay. Up. 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 Can you try? Try. 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 Do you hear? Okay. Sasa. All right. So, check, check, one, two, check. Okay, cool. All right. So, welcome everyone. Welcome, of course, uh, to our special guest speaker, Ottavio and Bruno. Uh, I will introduce them shortly. First of all, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Jack event 146. And uh, mm -hmm. likely then we will take a break upstairs for the supper. So a big applause. <laughs> so you see, now this time I brought it down so that I don't forget anything. Uh, just uh, before we get started, a couple of uh, logistics as usual. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube Milano mailing list and uh, to the YouTube channel. These are the main channels where we communicate the next events. And of course, uh, also invite your friends to be uh, subscribed and listen there. Uh, thank you, Jeff Brains, because uh, I see that the licenses are getting very popular. Uh, so they offer one uh, license to the iPhone for the event. So for those of one uh, that are uh, following with the streams uh, on YouTube, uh, there will be a link in the live chat. And for the one friend in presence here today, there will be a link to the mailing list. So we can gather from the people that are subscribed to both uh, um, channels. We are always uh, looking for speakers. Uh, so today, I really, actually, I'm really welcome for these talks. I won't spoil too much, uh, because hopefully it will motivate somebody in the audience today or that is following on the video uh, to a candidate and uh, propose for a talk. Uh, we don't always do deep dives. We also do some sort of like a knowledge sharing or experiences. Uh, so I really hope that uh, this talk of tonight, thanks to Otavio and Bruno, uh, will help you to get some ideas on how you get uh, for the next talk. And uh, to do so, you get in touch with the coordinators. So we have in front here Andrea, Andrea Gordel, Luca, Franz, uh, Daniele, Mario, of course, is always present, but uh, today he's enjoying uh, holidays. Uh, so, of course, ciao Mario, which is a second of the <laughs> and uh, thanks uh, to, of course, uh, Dream for the Geo uh, that is uh, hosting us. And uh, actually, can we make a big applause for uh, Dream for the Geo? <laughs> not only for the Dream Milano community, but uh, all the community of, uh, of uh, several meetups, uh, as uh, usually you can get uh, some of the calendar of the events that they host. Luca, what do you want to Okay. So I actually also have just a couple of information very shortly uh, that I want you to have. First of all, subscribe to the uh, check-in. Not always, that is for your safety, but as well you can participate in a raffle for uh, the Inns Prime. So uh, that is a very nice service, so you might get a chance to win it. Uh, where we are we? Maybe some of you know, uh, but for those that don't know, we are in their tech hub. Uh, so they have a uh, location in Spain, Portugal, Italy, and Argentina. They are a community of about uh, 600 developers between a uh, check that can contend and machine learning are uh, the most prominent for, I guess, what the audience uh, today is interested of. And they are looking for talent. Uh, so maybe you are not only motivated to give a talk to the Milano, but maybe to apply. To do so, uh, there are some QR codes uh, scattered around. But then maybe you can also as well, after the talk, uh, have a chat with some of the people that are working here. Uh, so it's very interesting. And with that, so enough ado, uh, please a round of uh, applause and a welcome uh, to Otavio for the first speech of today.
Oh, ciao, buonasera. Uh, mi chiamo Tavi Santana e oggi parlerò come fare software con esito. In generale noi pensiamo, ok, come posso fare questo? E per noi noi facciamo molto eh, software, questo è bello, però anche ci sono svantaggi di fare questo. Perché in generale noi pensiamo, ok, come posso fare questo? Come posso mettere questo? Uh, e mettiamo anche tecnologia per fare questo punto. Uh, mi chiamo Otavio Santana e mi piace molto la cultura uh, italiana, sono brasiliano, però oh, uh, mi piace molto, io so per esempio che mi chiamo Otavio, questo è il nome primo imperatore romano e mi piace molto la pizza italiana. Questo è vero. So, questo articolo qui che mi piace molto e questo articolo parla di sei modi di non mettere uh, software con esito e anche gli obstacoli. Mi piace molto parlare di quattro punti qui perché il primo parla. Ok, io ho molte riunioni, io ho molte meetings per fare questo, per fare il planeamento di questo punto. Però il secondo punto è che io ho entregato una cosa che non ha senso per l'utente. È come io sono andato qui per eh, ordinare una pizza e dopo tre ore loro hanno regressato per me una insalata. O una cosa molto peore, una pizza con ketchup americano. <ride> io ho viaggiato per tre ore per mangiare una pizza americana qui. E, ok, Ottavio, tu hai fatto molte riunioni, tu, è, tu hai fatto molte cose che non ha senso per l'utente. Cosa tu hai fatto? In generale, il terzo punto parla di questo. Noi mettiamo cosa che non ha senso, in generale questo è una complessità che non ha senso di mettere qui. Quindi, ci sono due equipe e c'è una, po una povola collaborazione tra le due. Questo sbaglia un cliché, però in generale, come noi parliamo di sviluppatore, loro entregano una cosa che non ha senso per l'utente. E, per e perché questo? Perché non piace molto la tecnologia. Noi abbiamo una passione più forte in questo punto, e questo ha un vantaggio e un svantaggio in fare questo. Perché in generale, quando sono andato in un, una conferenza, mi piace molto praticare Kubernetes, microservice, e non importa qual, qual punto che ho bisogno fare, io metterò questa soluzione, che ho bisogno di mettere questo linkage domani. Quindi sono linkage driven design. Faccio oggi, domani metto questo in linkage. E naturalmente questo punto non ha senso. E ogni volta che questo punto ha più senso, io ho domandato per me. È che noi capiamo cos'è ingegneria di software? Perché questo non ha senso. E per parlare di questo, io parlerò un po' di storia, come ho parlato, mi piace molto questo punto, perché è primo. Bisogna capire cos'è ingegneria. E questa è una parola bisogna di voi che vuole dire l'abilità di fare qualcosa, come un archiaduto, con l'obiettivo è fare uh, move, un fiume per una città, per mettere una infrastruttura meglio in una città, come questo punto qui. E quando io parlo di ingegneria, noi bisogna, bisogna pensare che questo è vecchio, questo non è nuovo, questo non è giovane, e ci sono due che ha 2000 anni. Questo sono uh, ingegneria civile e anche militare. 
e credo che voi conoscesse molto bene questo punto qui. Questa è la storia di Giulio Cesar che vuole attraversare un fiume e, loro, e lui ha pensato di come fare questo. Il risultato è che lui ha fatto una ponte e ha attraversato 40.000 persone in 10 giorni. Perché questo? Perché in generale, quando noi parliamo di ingegneria civile e anche militare, ci sono le due chiaro, la strategia, l'obiettivo di fare questo e anche la tattica, come noi facciamo questo. Il punto qui è, io ho l'obiettivo di fare, uh, muoversi una 40.000 persone per questo punto. Come faccio questo? Un punto che ha senso. In questo punto l'obiettivo non è mettere legno in un fiume, per fare una ponte per fare uh, questa mov movimentazione. E la stessa cosa noi abbiamo anche in ingegneria di software. Ci sono questo libro che mi piace molto, e ho una raccomandazione più forte per leggere, perché questo libro qui, Modern Software Engineering, di David Foley, parla una definizione bellissima di ingegneria di software. Per lui, ingegneria di software è un modo di applicare empirico, io non so come parla questo in italiano, scuse, scientifico per aspettare un punto che ha senso economico in un problema di software. Come ho parlato di Giulio Cesar, perché lui ha fatto una ponte, perché non ha avione, perché il punto è, non è fare la ponte, è fare la movimentazione di 40.000 persone. E questo bisogna essere rapido e veloce. E come ho parlato, ingegneria civile e anche militare, ci sono le due parole, strategia e tattica, anche ingegneria di software, ci sono le due parole, però con altro modo di parlare. In generale, come noi parliamo, in strategia, in, ta in tattica, noi pensiamo in architettura e in design. Io so, ci sono molti libri che, par libri che parlano di questo, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 libri, e ogni libro parla di un modo diverso, però questi sono complementari. Quindi, uh, il primo libro parla che in genere di software è una collezione di cose difficili di modificare, Dopo, Building Evolution Architecture parla che architettura è un modo di fare una cosa a lungo termine. E in generale, noi pensiamo che l'architettura è la strategia, pensare a lungo termine, e il design è come, come noi facciamo. E questo libro qui, per iniziare a parlare e conoscere software architecture, Fundamento del software architecture, ci sono due regole che mi piace molto. La prima, prima regola, regola è everything in software architecture is a trade-off. Ogni cosa che ho metto in software ci sono vantaggi e svantaggi per mettere questo. E dopo il punto che ho parlato, è il perché è più importante che il come. Primo bisogna, bisogna pensare perché io ho fatto questo? Dopo come io farò? La strategia, dopo la tattica. E questo è più similare a Golden Circle di Simon Sinek. E lui parla che noi bisogniamo iniziare con il perché. E quando io parlo di questo punto, di ingegneria di software, io ho parlato che primo è il perché, e questo perché è anche il contesto, la motivazione di fare questo. Quando io ho questo punto, ora sì, posso camminare in oltre 5 punti per sviluppare un'applicazione. Documentazione. Io so che questo non mi piace molto di fare. Dopo test. Uh, cloud, perché oggi è difficile di pensare un'applicazione senza avere cloud. E l'ultimo codice e DDD, Domain Driven Design. Il primo punto che io parlerò qui è un punto semplice di pensare, che è il code. 
perché questo è un grafico di un libro che si chiama La filosofia di soft design e lui parla e lo fa un paragone delle due come posso fare questo in strategia e anche con tattico quando ho iniziato questo con tattico io inizierò questo rapido più veloce però a lungo termine sarà difficile di, di mantenere questo codice sarà molto difficile di, di capire cosa là e l'altro punto è lo strategico ok potrebbe io inizierò non molto veloce però a lungo termine questo sarà meglio che tattico in questo libro parla una persona che si chiama tattico tornado questa persona è una persona che gli vuole molto fare il tattico come implementare e questo farà molto veloce però ogni code che lui fa è difficile di capire è difficile di mantenere lui fa più veloce però è impossibile di altra persona mantenere questo codice e questo libro parla che ogni equipo ha un tattico tornado quindi se voi non avete pensato in una persona potrebbe questa, questo tattico eh, tornado può essere voi uh, quindi anche ci sono di, di, di. perché in generale quando noi pensiamo in regola di affare pensiamo in un modo di fare questo e come sviluppatore java noi pensiamo in ddd questo libro qui è un libro che mi piace molto per praticare uh, in generale noi pensiamo che ddd è un framework è un, una cosa per fare un'applicazione come sviluppamento però questo non è 100% vero DDD è un modo di pensare e traducire una informazione una sapienza oppure dominio in code per questo noi abbiamo le due la strategia che è ambiguous language uh, il modo di parlare il dominio la sapienza Uh, dopo il, il contesto, bounded context, e dopo il mappa. Solo dopo capire la strategia ha senso di mettere il tattico, come entity, value object, service, repository e aggregator. Se io inizierò questo con il design, io farò una cosa non molto, non molto bella, come pizza con ketchup americano. Questo non ha senso. Primo, capire cos'è la strategia di questo dominio, la sapienza, dopo uh, fa la implementazione. Ok, io ho parlato di cosa che voi potrebbe, eh, voglia molto sapere, ora parlerò di una cosa non molto popolare, documentazione. Io, sei, io so che questo è difficile di parlare, perché in generale noi pensiamo ok questo non ha senso di mettere documentazione in un'applicazione quindi aziende ha le due opposte quando metto molta documentazione e questo non ha senso perché io non posso compilare una presentazione e l'ultimo è quando io non ho alcuna documentazione quando io faccio tutte le cose come go horse uh, in eh, questo è importante perché in generale mi hanno domandato Ottavio quanto costa per mantenere una documentazione quanto costa per fare documentazione io non so perché io non ho avuto nessuna ricerca su, su questo però io so quanto costa per non avere documentazione per esempio questo qui questo è un'azienda che si chiama Night Capital e lui ha perso 460 milioni di dollari in 45 minuti per non avere documentazione. 45 minuti senza documentazione. Uh, quindi 460 milioni di dollari. E questo è più costoso. Se ti devo andare per questa azienda, 
quanto custa a documentazione, loro parleranno, ok, non avere documentazione costa 460 milioni di dollari in 45 minuti, è molte cose. E quando parlo di questo, della importanza della documentazione, io ho bisogno di parlare anche di due ponti, il tattico e anche la strategia di questo. Quando parlo di tattico, io parlo di questo punto cerca del codice, cerca del design, come fare documentazione di source codes, change log, readme, e oggi è difficile di pensare in un'integrazione sem mettere uh, API come microservice. Ci sono questo libro qui, che si chiama Doc for Developers, e lui parla che la documentazione per eh, per il sviluppatore, lui tente anche sono loro. Quindi, io bisogno scrivere una documentazione che ha senso per noi, come sviluppatore oppure ingegnere di software. Uh, come ho parlato, quattro punti, code, change log, read me API. In generale, noi non pensiamo che scriviamo code per po poesia o qualcosa bella, per Bisogna anche di mettere documentazione in questo punto. Non bisogna scrivere uh, cos'è questo, come questo è un get, questo è un set, per la motivazione di fare questo. E ci sono questo qui, questo progetto, che sono open source, e ogni progetto qui, che ha più di 20 anni, tutto questo ha documentazione. Java, io credo che 28 anni, questo anno e Java ha un estensivo, un molta documentazione. Android, PHP, Golang, Kubernetes, Python, ogni progetto qui ha molta documentazione. Dopo, README. README è questo file and root. E perché bisogna questo? Perché io non sono Jedi. Io non posso leggere mente, quindi bisogna scrivere la motivazione di noi abbiamo questo eh, repository. In generale bisogna avere quattro punti, una descrizione, perché noi abbiamo questo, dopo l'obiettivo di, 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 di che è questo repository, dopo come iniziare, l'ultimo, come installare o come utilizzare questo. Per esempio, se ho una library Java, io metto questo in Maven, eh, come posso utilizzare questo con Maven oppure Gradle? Dopo, change log. Bisogna mettere ogni cosa in software con versione. Io credo che questo è sempre semplice di capire, perché quando ho messo questo è facile di regressare per una versione stabile. E change log deve essere semplice per humans, non per macchine, e ogni modificazione deve avere un tipo di modificazione, cosa ho messo qui, e l'ultima versione deve essere capo del de file. L'ultimo tattico qui è il git commit, in generale mi piace molto questo modo di fare, che è il git conversional, dove io inizio questo con un tipo di modificazione, dopo la descrizione. In generale qui io ho fatto queste le due organizzazioni che io lavoro, uh, Eclipse e Apache Foundation, e le due io ho messo questo, fix per fixare qualcosa, fit per fare una modificazione in source code, uh, dopo build, uh, CD, continuous deployment, come mettere un un file di docker o qualcosa come questo, show una modificazione che non è in Java o source code, per esempio un upgrade di library in Maven, questo sarà in XML file oppure Gradle, che sarà un JSON file, e questo non sarà necessariamente Java. Posso mettere show CI, Continuous Integration, per esempio, se io voglio mettere un, un altro punto di pipeline, docs, la cosa che noi non vogliamo fare, documentazione, style, per rimuovere eh, space, 
o mettere space o fare qualche modificazione in questo file refactoring, refactor, refactoring performance l'ultimo test io ho avuto questo e mi piace molto fare questo modo, modo perché quando ho avuto questo è semplice di sapere cosa ha in questo file ok ci sono fix una descrizione io so di prima volta che questo fixerà qualcosa ci sono fit o ci o shore uh, questo è più semplice di fare o di capire anche come ho parlato tattico uh, design strategia architettura e questo ci sono quattro punti di fare mi piace molto le quattro uh, c4 model questo è molto simile a un google maps però di architettura di integrazione di progetto uh, 4c il contesto primo punto come ho parlato bisogna iniziare con il perché dopo container questo punto io non parlo di docker però la unità di un'applicazione uh, components application layer il livello di applicazione l'ultimo code in generale non utilizziamo l'ultimo con rarissima eccezione noi facciamo primo secondo quando il progetto è giovane e il terzo quando il progetto è più uh, uh, mature io non so come parlo questo in italiano scusa c'è quattro modi per fare la mappa dell'architettura Dopo Tech Raider per visualizzare la, ogni tecnologia che ho nell'organizzazione. Questo ha un obiettivo forte di evitare LinkedIn Drill Design. A ora io so cosa io ho in applicazione che è maturo per utilizzare. Io so uh, la tecnologia che non ha senso per me oppure deprecated. Io so la tecnologia che io, io come organizzazione io io studio questo, io peschiso questo. E uh, dopo ADA, Architecture Decision Records, per scrivere e pensare ogni decisione di modo architetturale. E questo punto è più importante perché sbaglio, avrò molto, questo ha senso, però l'obiettivo qui è non fare lo, lo stesso sbaglio due volte. Perché? Perché io scrivo e ho ricordato questo per evitare eh, seconda volta, terza volta, quarta volta e l'ultimo una meglio documentazione, una meglio comunicazione noi possiamo fare questo asincrono non è, bisogna fare questo come una riunione dopo che ho parlato molto di documentazione anche bisogna parlare di test e come test in generale noi pensiamo ok bisogna mettere solo test coverage questo è buono, questo è un primo passo, però non è sufficiente. Bisogna anche fare mutation testing. Perché? Perché questo verificherà se questo test ha senso. Cos'è mutation test? È, è un framework, come ho parlato qui, se come sviluppatore Java, verificherà se, ok, io ho modificato il source code e questo anche dovrà Uh, modificare il uh, behavior of the test se non ha modificazione in questo punto questo test non fa niente quindi uh, bisogna fare meglio e questo qui è più importante per fare insieme di test coverage per sapere se questo test coverage ha senso o no l'ultimo come ho parlato test unitario il test unitario non ha senso se lo, se lo metto solo bisogna, bisogna anche pensare in modo tattico e strategico di fare questo test come the pyramid of test of might and follower che io ho sì unit test però anche ha più integrazione qui e questo è, ci sono una paragone che ok unit test è molto veloce però è, in, in, è molta isolazione 
io non posso fare integrazione tra due servizi, per esempio. UI test, io metto molta integrazione, però questo è più costoso di fare. Ok, io ho parlato di test, documentation, ora io ho anche bisogno di parlare di cloud. Perché in generale, quando noi parliamo di cloud, parliamo che questa soluzione sarà più economica. Però la ricerca parla altre cose, parla diverso di questo punto. Per esempio qui, 94% dell'azienda ha overspending in the cloud. Io ho gastato di più che ho sperato. Ok, Ottavio, per quanto noi abbiamo, noi siamo parlato di qui. Ci sono un'altra ricerca che parla che questo overspending è di 35%. Quindi, se io gasto uh, 100.000, 35.000 non ha senso di mettere qui. E, e questo, ok, se, se, se ci sono un'azienda che ha fatto bellissimo e è economico con cloud, questa azienda è un'eccezione, non è una regola. E come noi facciamo per mettere un meglio sviluppamento con cloud? Primo, per me questo libro è bellissimo di capire, e, e ci sono molte uh, persone che parlano, uh, 97 cose che ogni ingegnere deve sapere, e ci sono due punti che per noi è difficile di capire, perché noi piace molto la tecnologia. Il primo è, se ha senso di mettere use service, per favore, se ha senso, puoi fare. Il secondo, questo è difficile per noi parlare, però non necessariamente ogni soluzione deve mettere Kubernetes. Questa è una soluzione bellissima, però come tutto strumento, ha sbaglio, a vantaggio e svantaggio. Trade-off. E tu parlo di questo, io parlo anche del modo tattico di fare questo, come design. Come sviluppatore Java, The Chelf Act Application è una cosa forte di fare, e anche la filosofia GitHub. Ok, Git deve essere la fonte di verità. Il modo strategico è pensare che ogni servizio ha senso di fare. Ok, se io metterò questo come infrastructure as a service, io ho bisogno anche manten mantenere questo. E può essere più costoso. Questo qui è CNCF e parla piccolo di questo punto qui. Ok, puoi fare tutto on-premise, va bene, bisogna mettere persone per lavorare per questo o anche puoi lavorare con uh, serverless soluzioni. Il punto qui che io ho parlato è il contesto è importante. Se ho un'azienda piccola, se ho una startup, potrebbe, non ha senso di, di mantenere questo con Kubernetes. Meglio è mantenere questo in applicazione e utilizzare un pass, platform da service. E questo è tutto per oggi. Come ho parlato, ingegneria e software, ci sono le due modi di fare, due modi di visualizzare questo, la strategia e il perché, è il punto iniziale di pensare dopo come noi facciamo il design. E con base in questo contesto qui, io posso camminare in cinque punti, code, DDD, documentazione, cloud test. Perché questo? Un'applicazione salutabile deve pensare a lungo termine, quindi deve essere semplice di fare. Uh, oggi noi abbiamo molto più strumento che a 10 anni fa, però ci sono questo articolo qui che parla che perché noi abbiamo molti strumenti per sviluppare qualcosa, a ora è difficile eh, di fare qualcosa. Perché in 10 anni un Hello World con Java era un Hello World. Oggi un Hello World con Java 
é uma integração com microservices, integração com, com Kafka, even driven design, executar questões em Kubernetes e integração com blockchain e em dois anos será anche integração com ChatGPT. E este é um ponto que nós, como senior, sviluppatore, devemos pensar sempre. Tudo é tempo, porque deve ser simples para nós e anche outros colegas. Me piace anche outro italiano que parla de questo, Leonardo da Vinci, que parla que a simplicidade é o último estado de sofisticação. Ok? E questo é uma coisa que eu faço como engenheiro. Quando eu iniciato a fazer codes, eu faço questo com, com mais simplicidade. Porque eu não sou como fazer questo com design partners. I learned design partner cosa ho fatto e ho messo ogni volta tutte cose con design partner e questo era difficile di capire dopo io ho capito che ho bisogno fare o mettere design partner quando questo sarà semplice di mantenere pensare simple e lungo termine il risultato per me è the simplest code como ha parlato Leonardo da Vinci, o último estado de sofisticação. Com isso é tudo por hoje. Me chamo Otávio Santana, desenvolvedor de software. Sou Java Champion, Oracle Ace. Uh, eu trabalho com Java, fa Java 8, uh, como executive member of JCP. Sou Apache e Eclipse Committer. Eu trabalho em Jakarta e Microprofile, Duke Choice Award, DCP Award. Me piace muito escrever um livro de tecnologia. Quindi, eu não tenho uma vida social saudável por isso. Mas, <risos> uh, uh, nós podemos ser amigos. Quindi, eu, Twitter, LinkedIn, nós podemos falar de qualquer coisa, como história, filosofia e anche desenvolvimento de software. Questo è tutto per oggi, grazie. No question, no question. <laughs> Domande? Domande? Questions? Are, are some of the books that Ottavio shown uh today some of you started to read no because actually one uh, about the, the um, uh, software engineering uh i've um, I started skimming on it and it's quite interesting so i think that was a really great suggestion as well and i'm looking forward also to the one to the <laughs> other ones uh, anche agli altri che hai suggerito assolutamente grazie no, no domande so grazie per tutto per okay. oggi comunque poi dopo c'è eh, di speaker, uh, diciamo, possiamo fare quattro chiacchiere anche a post evento, quindi se avete delle domande magari pensatele eh, se volete fare. Bisogna pensare molto di utilizzare questo per correre, perché con Java sarà un poco pesante.
Hello. Testing. You guys hear me well? Yes. Can you guys see, hear me well over there? Is it good? All right. So I'm going to I'm going to So first thing first, um I'm sorry but I don't speak Italian. <laughs> right? I'm not nearly as talented as Ottavio, neither in Java nor in languages, right, in general. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's good, but is that all good? Okay, this, let me see, put this right, right here, that's better. All right, so, but I do have socks. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so Ottavio did not use this trick, but I will, okay? So I, I have several socks, how about this, right? Oh, there's even more here. Okay, cool. So, you know, if you've got questions, right, we have socks, right? How about, how about we trade that, right? <laughs> okay, so first of all, thanks so much uh, for Jug Milano and everyone here uh, for, you know, organizing uh, the event here. Not only the event, but organizing everything that I'm sure uh, that you guys do here, right? You know, websites and, and YouTube channels and all this equipment everything so put your hands together for Juga Milano guys all right thank you thank you so much thank you all right uh, so that's what we're doing here uh, in this in Europe right um, you know when when I when I organized this trip Otavio said don't worry Bruno I'm coming with you and and then he just he skipped for most of this and, and doing and doing just Italy right <laughs> but <laughs> Um, but, you know, we're visiting uh, nine countries. Actually, I went to the Vatican yesterday, so it's that's ten countries, right? So I'm visiting, I'm, I'm visiting ten countries and doing 13 events uh, here in Europe, um, you know, to actually be close to you guys. And you know, the, the whole objective is to first you have this, uh, this chance to talk about, to talk about career. And I'm, s I'm seeing uh, good friends that I meet that I've met online uh, for a long time. I'm meeting good friends that I've, I've met in person, right? So Tilla actually came from Zurich, right? That's where, that's, it's not uh, Switzerland, but not Zurich specifically? Sangal. that I have no idea what it is, right? But, you know, but, but Tilla has been to Brazil uh, and, and we've met in person there. So she's now here. Um, and so I think there's this opportunity for us to come and meet people, right? And actually see eye to eye. So we've met before, right? He, has a, he said, I have a picture of you. So come on, let's take another one. Come on, yeah, sure, you know, have a one, so. <laughs> no, 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 yes, take, let's take a picture, right. Yes, so, okay, it was my phone, right, so. No. The ones that are embarrassing. That's okay, <laughs> so, so where, where's, where's your phone? Damn it. Yeah, you got your phone, right? Yep. So here, so, so here is the challenge, right? You take a picture. Okay. Yes, come on, go ahead. Uh, one. Yes, you take a picture, good. All right, so right here in front of everyone, yes, okay. Cool. So now we have to take another one, but now let's change the position a little bit, right? So take another picture here. Okay. So the challenge is you go on Twitter uh -huh. and you tweet that picture and you put my name there, BR okay. German, so I see it. Then I tweet my picture okay. with you. Okay? okay. Is that good? Right. Okay. So same thing. Anyone wants to do that? You know, so we get to know each other, right? A little bit better. And uh, no, it's, a, it's a way for us to see, to put a face uh, behind the names and, and behind you know, the connections, right? So that's what I want. I want, I want, I'm here so we can meet. Actually, it's not going to happen in most, in most of those places here. I'm just like for one day, right? But here, I'm here until Sunday. So I travel Sunday morning, right? So if anyone is, wants to spend some time tomorrow or Saturday, if anyone wants to, to show something in Milan that I should meet, I'm just going to tell you that I cannot go see The Last Supper, because the next uh, available position is in October or something like this, right? So, but besides that, you know, if you want, if you want anyone sp want to spend some time, I'm I'm here uh, for that, right? So, um, and and it, I think it's very interesting that every time that that I travel, here's my experience, right? You know, 
I call, you know, someone somewhere in the woods, right? Say, come, and there's going to be an event, <laughs> right? And I get in the plane, and so uh, he's trusting me that I'm going to show up. <laughs> He'll send me send, send to a top of message, where are you guys, right? You're supposed to be here by now, right? So, and so he's trusting that we're going to show up. And we trust that when we get here, there's going to be someone, right? Even if it's just him, right? <laughs> but we, you know, uh, we live in a trusty society, right? We trust each other. And, uh, and this is so amazingly important for our career because we depend on that trust. And, um, and software developers in general, we, we tend to be, how do I say, uh, we love learning. Right? Don't we love learning? Right? Everyone loves learning here? Yeah? Right? Cool. So we are learning, right? I like to say that we are addicted to learning. <laughs> right? So um, let me ask one question here. How many of you have, in the past, or even maybe recently, but, you know, sometime in your career, you bought, like, a book, a course, you know, some kind of training, maybe an event, right, that you really wanted to learn from, right? You know, you about a technology, you know, you have Jakarta EE here, so you want to learn Jakarta EE, so you went on and you, and you bought, I don't know, Elder Morai's book about Jakarta EE, and you really want to learn that, and you bought that, that, that train, you bought that, that book, but you never even open it. <laughs> Everyone, right? Absolutely. So we're addicted to that, right? We pay for things, right, that, we don't, that, we, that we're not going to even open, right? We know that, right? And so uh, because we are addicted to learn. But at the same time, we know that learning is not the most important. It's funny, isn't it? We don't put how many books we read or the courses we took on our resumes. We know that that doesn't count. We know that what really counts is the experience that we have, the things that we did. So intuitively, we know that what's the most important is, is what we did. And it's, it's, I find this interesting because um, when we go, you know, looking, looking for a job is just an example, right? I'm not saying that, that, that that's what we need to be doing, right? Looking for jobs all the time, right? But uh, we know that what we do is what counts. To get a job, to work on a more interesting project. You know, you, Otavio works on open source. You know, he's one of the, the, com the committers of the JVM, for example, right? Not a committer, an author of the JVM. Uh, he is, uh, he works on JNOSQL, all kinds of open source projects, right? And it's what he does that counts. And many of us, we want to be part, we want to uh, work on open source. And we know that if we don't do anything, it just, it doesn't matter. We, we, you, can, you can go, you can Look in GitHub, you can learn about the project, but if you don't do anything, it doesn't count, right? And so um, it's, it's an interesting situation because we know that we have to do things to count. But also, there's a, there's a question, the first question I got when I was in Jug Munich, the very first question I got was, but I don't have time, <laughs> right? So we don't have time, and so here's the interesting thing. We're talking about working on interesting projects. We're talking about uh, working on interesting companies because we know that if we get paid to do something, that's when we get the experience of doing it because then we have the time, right? Someone is paying for us to do it. And so, uh, so that's why we keep looking for better jobs, right? You know, there's a, a sign right here that says we are hiring 500 new team members. You know, the people are looking for people, and we are looking for the most interesting jobs, right? So it's a very dynamic uh, market right now, right? So, um, and so here, here's, the, here's the challenge then we have to think about. So we, we need to work for amazing companies. And we know that learning is not the most important thing. It's doing things, right? But we only do things when we get hired to work for amazing things. No, 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 Bruno, you're wrong. I do things at night. Right? When my kids go to sleep, I, I, I do something, right? Or on weekends, right? You know, there's, a, there's a, f uh, a saying that I used to repeat a lot, and I don't like that much that anymore, but there's a, there's <coughs> there's a guy in Brazil that would say that uh, success is made at night. 
right? Because that's when you do, that's when you have your own time, right? But, you know, by, but, you know, and I thought about this a lot, right? That's, that su success is made at night. And there's, this, there's a little true of that. I'm not saying it's completely false. But in reality, if our skills just improve when we do things, how many hours can we actually do things at night? Two hours? Three hours? Four hours? I had a mentee of mine, four hours. She's like, no way, like four hours, no way, right? I had a mentee of mine, his name is Rodrigo, uh, and Rodrigo, uh, he, wa he would wake up every day at 4 o'clock in the morning to study until 8, and then he would go to work. And even then, nothing happened in his career. He still got in the same place, doing the same things. So when he changed it, first thing I told him, I said, man, stop doing this. Let's work on what matters. And today, Rodrigo lives in Canada. You know, he's a, he's a uh, developer's conference rock star, right? He wrote books. So, uh, you know, just studying is not what counts. And doing is what, what matters. So we have to be in a place, you know, you, you f even if you do four hours a day, you still do eight hours a day in your job, in your work. So if you could use those eight hours a day in your work to improve, that's when you're going you, you're gonna to do more. You're going to do better. Because only doing that changes our brain, guys. You know, our skills, only we can, we, skills are like muscle. It's very funny, right? Skills are uh, biological things, right? You change your neurons. So it's like muscles. If you don't do, nothing happens. So uh, with that, there's three things I like to mention that I think are very important. Uh, th three words I like to use together, although they are not the same thing, but I like to use them together. The first word is reputation. You know, the best way for us to, to work on amazing projects, for us to work on great places, is to have a great reputation. Right, so reputation, uh, reputation is what people believe about you. Right? That's what the, the word means, right? So, um, so when, you have good, great, great, uh, when you have great reputation, that's when you get called to work on the most amazing projects. Because in reality, guys, that's what happens. You get called to work on the most amazing jobs. Why? Because research shows that up to 75% of the job offers are in what we call the hidden job market. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that ex expression, but basically, those are jobs that don't exist. Up to 75% of jobs they don't exist. So what do I mean by that? So what's your name? Giancarlo. Giancarlo. So hey, Giancarlo, nice to meet you. Not, I mean, we've met before, but no. So, so I'm here with Giancarlo. Let's say I work with Giancarlo, right? So I'm part of his team. And I tell him, I say, hey, Giancarlo, you know what? This whole thing about leaving in Italy is not working for me, man. I'm gonna, I gotta get back to Brazil. I'm, I'm moving, right? So I'm gonna quit my job. Not right now, like in about a month, right? So, but you know, I trust you. I'm telling you ahead of time, I'm going to quit. At this moment in time, the only person in the world that knows there is a, a position in his company is Giancarlo. No one else knows about that. HR doesn't know about that. The rest of the team doesn't know about that. He's the only person that knows that he needs a replacement. And when do you think he's going to start working on replace me? When I leave? No, he's going to start doing this right now. So what's the first thing he's going to ask me after he agrees with me that I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the company, right? Because that's that probably there's going to be a conversation there, right? You know, if, I'm, if, if, if I have a good reputation, if I don't, <laughs> right, like, yeah, go ahead, go. Right? But, you know, uh, he's going he's gonna to say, the first thing he's going to say is, okay, Bruno, I understand you have to go. You see, we didn't even agree on this, but that's the first question. Do you know anyone that can replace you? Right, so what's your name? Andrea. Andrea. So nice to Hi, Andrea, how are you doing? So I say, Giancarlo, Andrea is great, man. I work with him. I know, I know his work, right? You know, I've, I've met him at the user group. I've, I've done some open source projects with him. I know he can do my job very well. So Giancarlo says what? He calls Andrea, say, hey, Andrea, 
I have this amazing job, man. You know, it's the job that Bruno was doing. It's very fun. You know, we work in amazing technologies. We're going to work on, you know, you pay lots of money. Uh, you can work remotely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great job. Do you want to work for me? That's Giancarlo saying. It's a great job. Do you want to work it? Yes. yes. All right. So that position, it's taken. It's never going to show up on, on, on job boards anywhere. Because Andreas, I just accept the position. Make sense? That's the hidden job market or the hidden job market. So for those positions, you got to be called. Now, what's your name? Antonio. Antonio. Now, Andreas can be, Antonio can be way better than Andreas. Right? He can be a better developer. He might even be looking for a job. He might be a better fit for that position than Andreas is. Maybe he would accept a lower payment. Or maybe he would have some experience that Andreas does not have. I don't know. For some reason, he could be better. But it does not matter because he was not called. Make sense? And we know that it works like this, guys. Absolutely every one of us have, in, have suggested a friend, have suggested someone that we know. And that person has been hired with very little interview, very little fuss. It just you know, gets hired and that's it. Make sense? We all know this truth. We just don't think that it's true when we are looking for a job, right? Because then we send resumes to people, right? But that's, that's, that's how it works. We know that. And so reputation is fundamental, right? Because reputation is what people believe about you. If Giancarlo believes something about you, that's the, he's going he's gonna to hire, right? But now there's an interesting thing. And by the way, second word I'm going to talk about here is that goes very well together with reputation is trust. Because I trust Andreas, Giancarlo trusts Andreas. Because trust is something that people have. It's not the company that trusts anyone. Right? It's the fact that I trust him and and you know and he trusts me. So that so that's how he works. Tr so trust and reputation, they're not the same thing but they go very well together. Make sense? So now, here's, a, here's this interesting thing that I want you, th you guys to think about. Um, several years ago, I, had, I received a phone call like this. Hey, Bruno, we have a, we have a position. We'd like to, 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 to come fill that position. It was from a person in Sun, and this person said, you know, would you accept, right? A friend of mine, if I suggest your name, would you consider? I said, yeah, sure. So, so he said, my, you know, my boss is going to call you. She, she, need, she wants to talk to you. So I start a process of negotiation with Sun, and I negotiated with Sun for four months. And, you know, uh, Judith was, was the person that negotiated with me, right? She, she became my boss later on. So me and Judith, we negotiated for four months. She wanted me to do some things that I, I thought was amazing, but I wanted too much money. So she was not, you know, she, she needs to figure out that out. She wanted me to, uh, um, you know, to work for, 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 for me to get that much money. She wanted me to do other things that I was not very keen in doing, right? She wanted me to work on, on some other projects I'm, I, was, I was not very interested in. And I, I did not want to be hired by Sun because I, I had already worked for Sun in the past. And I had my own company at that time. So I did not want to leave my company, right? So I wanted her to hire my company. And, and I would work for, for, for Sun, right, as a contractor. She did not want that. She, right, she wanted me to be an employee. So we negotiated back and forth for four months. I had to, <coughs> I had to accept some things, right? I had to accept uh, being an employee, right? She had to accept the more money that I was asking for, right? So we negotiated back and forth for four months. Now, here's the interesting, and, I, and eventually I said yes. And um, that position, guys, was one of the most amazing positions I have ever seen, right? I, it was to be the community manager for NetBeans, the worldwide community manager for NetBeans. At the time, the most important open source project for Sun. NetBeans was absolutely everywhere. And, uh, and so 
a position that I would travel to anywhere I wanted to go meet you guys, like, you know, face to face. Uh, I was going to be working with great technology, going to be working with, with the top engineers at Sun. I was very c working together very close with the, with, with the, the, the uh, virtual machine or the Java, Java VM team. Awesome, right? Awesome position to be. So now here's, here's the important part. Okay? I just wanted you to, to, to notice that. So she called me um, and said, okay, it's all set. You agree. It's all good. So later that day, it was middle of the afternoon for her, but like early night for me, she called me back and said, hey, Bruno, can you be in Prague tomorrow? I said, no, I can't, tra I can't travel to Prague tomorrow. I, I would have to travel today. It's like end of the day already, and there's no way for me to pro be Prague tomorrow. But I could travel tomorrow and be there by Saturday. And she said, that's great. So travel tomorrow, right? So here's the phone number of someone at Sun that uh, you should call. So sh they're going to arrange a, t uh, a, a plane ticket for you so you can travel tomorrow, right? We're going to have a meeting during the next week for the whole team. I want you to be there. Okay, cool. So I was set. I called the person from Sun, and, you know, they, they got me a ticket and all, the, all that. I was ready to travel tomorrow. You know, thanks uh, that I have my wife that's, that holds things up for me, right? She holds the fort when I have to do, like, a crazy travel like this. So that's Karina right there. She's not paying attention because <laughs> she's heard that many times already, right? <laughs> so, um, okay, so I was ready to travel tomorrow. Next day... Right, about middle of my day, early morning for my, my boss, for Judith, she calls me again and said, pay attention, that's important. She calls me again and says, Bruno, HR has just published your position on the website. Can you please go there and submit your resume? <laughs> right? And he's looking like me like, this is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Because at some point of the process, HR has to be involved, and they have their own process, right? They receive a resume, and they do interviews, and do kind of, you know, that's what, that's what they do, right? That's, that's part of the process, right? So they have to follow it. And so um, can you imagine how many people submit a resume for that position, that great position? You know, hopefully there's no one in this room that did that, right? Because you might be a little bit mad at this point, right? But I know that I have friends of mine that call me and said, Bruno, Sun has just published this amazing position. It looks made for you. Maybe you should apply. <laughs> right? I have friends of mine that call me and said, Bruno, Sun has just published this amazing position. Do you think I have a chance? Right? And guys, this is not, I'm, 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 I, I love to talk about Sun because Sun doesn't exist anymore. I can say anything I want. <laughs> right? You know, I can, I can spill all the secrets. But let me tell you this. You know, uh, I've been flown from Brazil all the way to the U.S. to have meetings for two, three days with top executives of a company, being interviewed, right? Just to be rejected the next day, saying, sorry, you're not fit for us. And to find out two weeks later that the guy was, that was hired worked with the guy that was hiring in the past, in the previous company. So I know how it works. I've seen this dozens and hundreds of times with all kinds of companies. You know, I could name the companies that you're thinking. Yes, they do that, right? Because that's a hiding job market. That's how it works. And you guys know that because you've seen this happen in your own company too, right? So not only you, ne you, you need to be called, but many times you apply for positions. And look, I'm talking about the normal thing that happens, guys. I'm not even talking about the evil things, right? Because there's some companies that they go online. So that, that's a trick, right? Just so you know that. There's a trick. Some companies go online and they publish this amazing position that pays a lot of money, right? And then we are not looking for jobs. Say, man, I'm not looking for a job, but that position, that sounds awesome. And then you submit a resume for that position, and they interview you, and they say, you know what, you're not fit for that position, but we have another one for you. You would like to consider the other one. Because they, they bait and switch us, right? So, but I'm not, talking about the, I'm, I'm not here to talk about the evils of, of this process, because that's just the process. We know how it works. 
my, what, what, what bothers me, that's why I wrote a book about that, right? What bothers me is when we go to the process without knowing that it works like this, right? Because then you go in, you, you're interviewed to, to an amazing position, right? You submit your resume, you think that, look, that looks perfect for me. You send your resume, you're interviewed for it, and they say, no, you're not, we're not going to hire you. Or even worse, right? You never get a phone, a phone call back. Because I don't know how many people submit resumes for that position, guys. But I know that I don't know, neither does my boss. Because my boss has ne never interviewed anyone. Right? So, so then you get a rejection on the process, and you think, oh, man, I'm not a good developer. It's, it's me. I don't know enough. I don't know Jakarta EE. Right? I don't speak Italian. That's why I was not accepted, right? Because I'm not, I'm not, I need to learn something else, right? And remember, 75% of the jobs. Now, what do we mean by 75% of the jobs? That's the, that's the worst of all. What do we mean by 75% of the jobs? Let's say Giancarlo calls Andres, and he says, Andres, Bruno just left this position. And I really would like you to work for me. He, he suggested your name, and I think you'd be perfect for the position, right? So, Andres, it's a very boring job, right? We only work with very old uh, technologies. You have to come to the office every day, and there's no perks in the office, right? There's no, uh, uh, you know, fun tables or, or food. No, you have to bring your own food from home, right? And uh, it pays very badly, right? <laughs> Do you want that position, Andres? <laughs> no, right? I don't want it, right? Come on, come on please come it, right? So, Andres, do you want that position? No. Antonio, do you want that position? No. Sorry, your name? Samantha, do you want that position? No. So now, Giancarlo, what does, you know, no one wants that position, so what does Giancarlo do? He published on the internet, <laughs> right? So not only 75% of the positions are not uh, invisible, the ones they are. Not all of them, of course, right? But a good part of them are the ones that everyone said no. Right? And they might have said no just because, you know, Giancarlo is terrible at marketing, right? So he doesn't know. He just, <laughs> he just knows three people, right? You know, maybe that's, why, that's what the reason why, why is, uh, he didn't, he didn't get someone for the position, right? But... But maybe it's because the position is not a good position. Make sense? So don't feel bad when you get rejected for any of those things because that's just how it works. And worst of all, when, now, when I say those kind of things, right, there's, there's two attitudes that I've seen. Like people say, oh man, that's terrible. You know how evil those people are, right? Just tricking me, right? That's terrible. That's one way to see this thing. But the other, other attitude that I, I, I think is the, is the following. Look, there's two processes. The process that I call the rejection process. That's the process that we know, that we know how it works. It's very simple. You know, I have a position, and so I interview you, I interview you, I interview you, I interview you. The whole object of me interviewing you is to reject you. Right? Why? Because I don't know you. I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you. So the only thing I can do is reject you. You're not good enough, you don't, you don't speak Italian well enough. I reject you because you don't, speak, don't, don't, don't use Java. I reject you because you don't know JavaScript, right? And so the hope is, if I reject everyone that doesn't fit, I'm gonna hire him because he's the, the person that's the, be the best one. That's the hope of the rejection process. So it's made to reject you, right? So that's why you should not feel bad that you get, get rejected because that's how the process works. Now, that's one process. Now, there's another process, the process we were talking before, that I call the acceptance pro uh, process, right? So Giancarlo will not ask anything for Andres because he trusts him already. And so he's just going to hire him, you know, maybe do an interview here and there just to make sure that, that you know, it's, it doesn't fit, that Bruno, di Bruno didn't lie, right? Um, but, you know, that's, uh, uh, it's, it's the acceptance process. Now, here's the thing, my opinion, I prefer to be in a process where I have some kind of control, right? 
Because in the rejection process, I have zero control. I have, I can, there's nothing that I can do about it. But in the acceptance process, I can do lots of things about it. Do you know why? Because reputation is what people believe about you. And who controls that? You do. You work on your own reputation. Right? So it doesn't depend on anyone else. It depends on you. You make your own reputation. Right? Now, the third word I want to talk about here is when we mention re about, about reputation, we mention... So before I say this the last word, I just want you to think of one thing really quick. I want to... I want to be. I want to make. You know, just want to talk about reputation a little bit here, but I want to help you get the best jobs in the market, whatever that are, whatever whatever you want to do. So, so I want you to think for a second here. What is the biggest thing that you want to do? What is the biggest thing that you want to accomplish in terms of your career, right? So, what is the thing that you that that? How far do you want to get? And I want you, I want you to think about what prevents you from getting that today what is the thing that you don't have or or maybe you think you don't have that prevents you from having this most amazing position that you want because that's what i want to help you with i want you to think about that because i, I want you to tell me so i can help you uh, solve this problem today right so I'm, i don't have a lot of time to do that but if you're watching us here you can also start sending on online because i'm gonna i'm gonna see if there's anyone there watching there was someone watching when I got the link, right? So, yeah, so send your questions too, right? So there's a third word I want to talk about here. That has, that's not reputation, it's not trust, but also go very well together. And the word is visibility. Reputation is what people believe about you. So if I don't know you, Andres, I don't believe anything about you, right? So then you, don't, you have no reputation with me. So how can I hire you for an amazing position if I don't know who you are? So those three things, reputation, trust, and visibility, they go hand in hand. If you want to work in the most amazing job, in the most amazing positions, you have to have a reputation. And for you to have a reputation, not only you have to, have to be a trustworthy person, right? You, have to, you need people to trust you, but you have to be visible, right? That's why when Otavio does open source project, he's visible. But Bruno, that's Otavio, right? You know, he's a, like an awesome open source developer. He's doing all kinds of projects for years and years and years, right? But here's what I'm going to, I'm going to read something for you guys today. I received that today. Just give me one second here. Okay. So... Uh, this comes from, from Matilda, and she wrote to me today, right? I got this email at 9.54 9 a.m. She says, hi, Bruno. I wanted to thank you for your encouragement to do open source. Then she talks about, a little bit about her, her personal life, but then she goes on. But just look at the results. Okay, so just, just as for context, she, she talks a little bit about her personal life because some people were telling her that, yeah, open source is not, is not gonna help you, right? But then she says, but look, just look at the results. I made just a couple of contributions to a fundamental Rust crate, and three months later, I have an offer for a Rust job. She said, I never went, I never went full on, on into Rust because I want to invest my time like my money, right, wisely. And Rust has been a distant dream, something that I never thought I could actually work with. But those three merged commits have made all the difference because when the opportunity arose, I had something to show. Thanks, Matilda. And then we talk, you know, we, we, spend, we, we spend the whole day sending messages back and forth. She, tell me, she told me more things about that. But, um, you know, anyway, that's how it happens, guys. We see this all the time. You become visible, and people grab you, right? And it's not, I'm not talking about grabbing you, oh, because you're going to change companies. No, because many people don't want to change companies, right? I actually, th I actually think that's better to grow in your own company than outside. It's much easier. 
So I've got this friend of mine, Viping. Vip is a guy from India. And Viping uh, had this, this, you know, he worked in this, he loves it, his company, right? But he worked in a company where he could not even write articles. Seriously, Viping could not publish his articles on LinkedIn. And I said, Vip, you have so many people on LinkedIn, man. Promote your articles on LinkedIn. He said, no, I can't. Why not? Because my boss is on LinkedIn. I said, that's great, man. He's going to see your articles. Gonna be no, no, no. When my boss sees that I publish an article, he calls me and says, hey, Vip, you have too, many, too much free time, man. You're writing articles. <laughs> right? So that was the job that Vip was working on, right? You know, that's the kind of thing. But because he started participating on open source, because he started writing articles, right, he became visible. And what happened was that the boss of his boss of his boss one day called him and said, Vipin, you're doing some awesome things. I've been following you, what you're doing. I want you to work on the most amazing project on our company. And Vipin said, whoa, which project is that? The boss says, I don't know. I have 30 projects under me. I want you to go and talk to all of them, interview everyone, and you choose the best project for you to work on because we want to make you the best guy here. So today, Vipin is a vice president. Now, he's like Otavio. You know, Otavio is a distinguished engineer. He is, a, he is the, the right arm of the vice president of one of the biggest financial institutions of the world, right? So Otavio, what Otavio does, influence directly, see if I get the numbers right, influence directly 8,000 developers and indirectly 10,000 more developers. So, so what Otavio does in his company affects 18,000 developers, am I right? So he's a, he, Otavio is a vice president level at his company. He's a distinguished engineer, vice president level, although he does not have anyone under him. Right? That's why it happens. You know, that's you you can grow your career, you can you can grow a lot and uh continue to be technical. Right? So Otavio no one reports to Otavio. That's very interesting because Otavio cannot tell anyone to do anything, right? Because he's not a boss. But what he does, everyone follows because he's a leader. Make sense? That's what VP is today, right? VP is a vice president of his company. Right? So he grew inside his company. He's working the most interesting project he can inside his own company. And remember when I said in the beginning, when you're working on the most interesting things, when you're working the most challenging things, when you're working the most influential things, what happens? You grow technically. Right? Because now you're not just coding or, you know, some small feature there, right? You're actually doing the most complex thing that you can do every single day. Right? I can't say that, but the reason why Otav is not traveling with me in other places, right, is because he's dealing with a very, very complex issue in his company, right? And does, does, that, help, does that help you learn anything more? No? You're not learning anything? You're not getting, improving your skills? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, right. Yes, right? Because when, when you're doing the most challenging things, you're learning, you're improving, right? Much more, is there any book you could read to, to get that knowledge? No. no. Right? So, guys, that's what we want, right? We want to be on the most challenging, most interesting projects. For that, we need to be called. So, here's my five-step my five rule. If you're visible, right, if you share your, your, what you know to presentations, to open source, to, you know, anything, you become visible, right? If you're visible... No, if you, let, me, let me say this. If you share what you know, right? If you're visible on what you know, right? Other people know what you know. And they trust you on what you know. And so when they need what you know, they call you and not someone else. Right? That's how we get the best position in the market. Make sense? And this is possible. Right? It's possible to grow beyond senior positions. It's possible to achieve extremely influential and impactful uh, positions in the market, right? It's possible for you to, you know, do... Um, for, you blank out her name. Matilda, right? 
that she committed code on an important fundamental li Rust, libra Rust library. It's, it's, it's possible, guys, but you, wanna, you, you need to want to do that, right? You know, so if you want that, that's what I think you should do. Go become visible. Make sense? So now I want to apply that, what I just said here. I want to apply this whole notion of visibility or reputational thing to your problem. So I want you to tell me, anyone, uh, what is, so how much time do I have, still have? Two minutes, all right. Two minutes. Waiting for the pizza. So anyway, we can uh, take full advantage of this time. Please. Right. Okay. So he, here's, here's what we're going to do. The moment the pizza arrives, I stop. <laughs> All right? So until the pizza arrives, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you in your problem. So tell me where you want to get, or at least tell me what is the challenge you're, you're facing right now, and you're going to try to solve it. Oh, the pizza has arrived. <laughs> Here. And, oh, by the way. So first of all, you got one, oh, you. you got one, uh, thank you. you got one, and you got one, right? Because you're my, my test subject here. Sorry about that. So, okay, so, so you don't get another one. Uh, of I still have some, some, some here. Go ahead. I, I've got a question about what you said before. Mm -hmm. And uh, what if, for example, the whole audience here or everybody mm -hmm. do what you're suggesting, we're still having uh, uh, not enough jobs, I yeah. guess. That's great, right? If everyone does that, so, so that's a good question, right? So what if everyone does? Now, maybe if everyone does it, we would need to do something different. I don't know, right? But the, here's the problem. I, I, get th I get this question quite frequently because here's the problem. Everyone thinks that if everyone tries to climb the Everest, there's not going to be space there, right? And it's kind of true, right? If you've seen pictures of the Everest lately, <laughs> there's a big line, right? <laughs> Yes, but career is not like the Everest. You have your own mountain, right? You can build your own mountain. Your career is completely different than mine. So you can build your own mountain. You can be the top, top specialist in whatever you're doing. So the reality is that there's lots of mountains to climb. But even if it was just one mountain, the top of the mountain, guys, is huge. It fits a lot of people. We are less than one-fourth of the own percent of the population. There's a lot of room for us to grow, a lot. Now, not only there's lots of mountains, not only the top of the mountains is huge, but most people have the same questions you have, and they don't even start trying to climb them. So not only there's lots of mountains, not only the top is, 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 is huge and fits lots of people, but it's empty because no one's trying it, right? That's why someone that does the three commits become a top developer. And here's more, one more interesting thing. It's very hard to compare two developers, very hard. You know, you have two speakers here today, two Java champions, two people that wrote books, two people that, that work on open source projects, two people that, uh, I know that, that, that uh, helped create the Java, the Java spe specifications, two people that have won Duke's Choice Award, two people that are rock star developers. Who is the better developer? I know it's Otavio, right? But you don't. It's very hard to compare two developers, you know, because there's, there's different things that we know, right? And let me tell you a uh, funny thing, right? I talk about this on, on JCon, and I think it's, it, I try to be quick here so we can have t time for more questions. But um, there are some people that did research on curriculums from scientists. Developers, you have two curriculums, you have no idea who they are, right? Have no idea. But on scientists, it's different, right? Scientists publish papers, so we know exactly who is the better developer, um, the better scientist. We know that. So those guys went to find, okay, so if you know that, who is a genius, who is not? They went to research that. They researched 6 million CVs of scientists because we have big data. We have lots of data. We know all this about scientists, right? Do you know what they found out? Who is a genius? They searched in all kinds of things. Nothing predicted if the person was going to be a genius or not. Nothing. Do you know the best predictor of genius that they found? 
Pay attention because that's crazy. The best predictor of a genius on a scientist is how many languages the Wikipedia page was translated. So, who is the best scientist? The one that has a better reputation. If that's true, or where we have real data, how much more true it is in our world, there's no real data. Make sense? So don't worry about that. Make sure that you have a reputation. Let the other people worry about their own reputation because that's an interesting thing about reputation. You have yours and you work on yours. I cannot work on Otavio's reputation. No one can help you for your reputation. You can do it yourself. So if you don't do it, he's going to do it. Make sense? All right. Questions? The guy over there back. Let me take your hand. Thanks for the talk. I, I like also the, the different point. Uh, and I agree about the fact that most of the job are hidden. But at a certain point, it's also like a sort of negative message. I mean, it's like uh, being able to show off in some way. It's probably better than just showing result. I mean, I'm helping my company. Oh. That's I'm a very good question. I'm just doing my job. Uh, I'm doing my job probably well or mm -hmm. not. Uh, but essentially what you're saying is like, well, if you know how the market works, that is not enough. I mean, you need to invest on your own reputation, your own visibility. I mean, I understand and agree, mm -hmm. but it's also essentially a sort of negative message. Right? Well, it's, I don't think it's a negative message, okay. right? So, so, so but I, I, I like the question. I, th I think that's an important question, right? So it, tr it is true that the most important thing is my visibility. No, it's not true. Because, the, because remember, there has trust involved, right? And trust also requires ability, right? One of the things that, you know, I only trust you because you can do the job, right? So if, you just, if you're just a fake, very soon you just, your trust gets destroyed. Or you get another company. That's true, that's true too, yeah. So, so it can happen, right? But no, but, but today, you know, uh, so we, ha we, had, we had this the other day. We had uh, in the, in the, I'm not going to say, I'm going to say any names here, right? So in a group that I participate at, right, someone suggests a person, right? And someone from that person's company, right, put his name on the line to say, that guy, no. Because I work with him. And that guy knows. So yes, your reputation will catch up with you, even if you're doing another company, right? So so yeah. So trust requires skill. Now that's that, that's that. But here's the other the, the other twist that I'm thinking. You know, I'm I'm gonna connect just to make more clear. Not only trust requires skills. The more reputation you have, the better position, more challenge position you get, the more skill you have. So that is, that is, you know, those things don't, they, they don't, they are not separate things. You know, you say, Bruno, I don't like to be visible. I just like to sit down and do my work. Yes, that is great. But then what happens that you get to a point in your career where just doing your work doesn't get you better. So you have to be put in a more challenging position, right? I was talking to a guy, that, uh, you know, maybe six months ago. I was talking to a guy from Germany. And he called me, and he, you know, he's not growing anymore, and all kinds of things. So this guy, he, was, he has been a senior developer since Java 1.2. So he's been a senior developer for more than 20 years. And for, the, for him, he reached the, the top of his career, right? You know, after 20 years, he doesn't grow. He doesn't do anything more interesting. He doesn't work on any more challenging projects. I mean, he still, he still get more money because people pay him more, right? But he's not growing. And so it's okay, yeah. You know, I, I, don't think, I don't think that you get to, to a position that you like is bad, a bad thing, right? But if you want to grow more, you're going to have to do something like this, okay? And again, um, there's one thing I say to speakers in our area. And you, got, you guys are you guys gonna, gonna know this, right? You've watched many, many talks in this group, right? So in our area, you can be an amazing speaker 
or you can have an awesome topic. You don't have to be both, <laughs> right? Is it true? You've seen here terrible speakers that have awesome things to say, right? And you also ha have heard, you know, people that didn't have, have you know, many things that you were interested in, but they, they were good speakers, and you like to talk, to talk anyway, right? Maybe that's my case here. <laughs> and so, um, so basically, in our field, I mean, there are other fields where you have to be both. But in our field, you can just be one of them. So, I mean, so you don't even have to have this amazing reputation that is like this, you know, the rock star or anything like this. Just a tiny little bit is enough for it to move up. Make sense? So, so I think that's a hopeful message. You know, because I think that the, the non-hopeful message is you thinking that if you study more, you get better, you get, you know, that's magically things going to happen for you. And then after 20 years, you're still stuck and you don't know why. I've got a mentee of mine, Scott, and Scott says, Bruno, and, and I can say that because it's in a video on my website, right? He says, Bruno, when I, you know, when I met you, it had been 35 years that I was trying to leave the IT industry because I could not grow. I thought it was just terrible. I thought that I, that I, I had no ex expertise. You know, Scott, when I met Scott, Scott had this thing in his head. He said, Bruno, I have a big problem, man. I can't start even a simple application by myself. You know, if you, if you tell me, write a web application, I don't even know where to start. Because he, tell, he told me, because I love to fix code. You know, Scott told me something that most developers will never tell me, but that's true. He said, I love legacy code. <laughs> right? <laughs> he said, I love to improve things. Today, Scott has actually has a program called Keep Calm and Refactor to help developers work with legacy code. And, and at, I did not know at that time, but today I know there are events for legacy code. There are tools for legacy code. Because after all, everything we do is legacy code, right? You guys are running Java and has 27 years old code running that thing, right? You know, you're all running Linux or Mac OS or Windows that are like all code that has been around for, for ages. You know, any library, that you ha any library that you're using today is legacy code. So Scott found his space. And today he's very happy what he's doing, right? So that's, so I, so that's why I think it's a hopeful message and not a, not a sad message. Make sense? Who else, guys? Pizza's not here yet, so the guy in the back. Yeah, I do have, uh, well, I like the talk, first of all. Oh, and by the way, here. And so you got, who, who's, you got one, you got one. And can you throw that? I yeah, can you throw, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to throw it, right? Okay, thank you. I do have a question about, because I, I think that those three concepts are extremely important, no? Mm -hmm. But the, the critical one, I believe, is visibility. Because you can gain trustability, because trustability is also between just two people, you know? Mm -hmm. And... But visibility is something that you need an opportunity to increase your visibility. Or if you don't have an opportunity, you have to create opportunity by yourself, right? For instance, writing articles or uh, talks, no? Mm -hmm. And my question is, how much time do you spend in order to improve your, increase your visibility trying also to find the right balance between time that you are investing, let's say, and what we call return on investment, no? Right. So, so time, for some reason, is not loading here. I was, was going to show you because you said visibility, but those are just part of the whole reputation. I, know I, I do have a f what I call the reputation formula. So, uh, yes, do not... Do pizza is here. So we get, we get, you know, yeah, so... Yeah, go ahead, put it, I'll, 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 I'll end, I promise I'm going to end, so I'm just going to answer his question then, right? So just, just to let you know, the reputation form is a little bit more than visibility, but I agree with you, visibility is a key concept, right? Because if any of those things, right, so for his question and your question, right, so if visibility is zero, you have zero reputation. If your skill is zero, you have zero reputation, right? So, you know, so, so those things, there's a lot of things that, 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 that you need to think about the reputation. One of the things is, 
consistency, right? Consi so you don't have to spend a lot of time. You just need to be consistent. You know, I have seen people completely change their lives, completely change their lives with five minutes a day. Can you do five minutes a day? So that's possible, right? I've seen people write articles, write books, do lots of things in five minutes a day. I, do, I usually ask for my mentees in particular. My mentees, I say, if you can do 15 minutes a day, we can do that, right? So usually people can do 15 minutes a day. But if you cannot, the case of a friend of mine, right, that he only could do five, we did five. Um, I just want to start to say that I really liked your talk. Thank you. And uh, I was uh, I was going to ask you, how do you because you you just finished talking about mentoring people, right? Mm -hmm. You you say people do just five minutes a day and you have amazing abs and stuff like that. And I I wanna I wanna ask you how how do you find the motivation or how do you manage to to keep up wi with all the three aspects you mentioned, like uh, uh, gaining trust, which I mean, so so which which I think also means uh, showing vulnerability to people, and to to build trust, you also have to be to be uh, um, to be sure of yourself. So. How do you how do you manage? Because we're we're talking about ourselves. We mm -hmm. we need to do something because we have we know what we want in life. So we only have the means to achieve that. But one thing I I think it's really is negative about what you said. Like we someone before said that that is negative. Mm -hmm. What I think is negative is that we're not considering the context in which in which you live, right? So. The, the context is important because you are not to be left alone and maybe sometimes it's difficult to find that kind of motivation by your own, no? So you do mentorship, so how how can someone mentor um, their selves? It's, it's himself or Okay, so, so you know self. what? You, you get the best question of all. I mean, I'm glad you already got, got a, you know why? Because I, your question just made me remember that I forgot to say to, to give a, a gift for everyone here. So, oh, wow. so, so you have a perfect <laughs> question. I, you know, I, do, do we, you know, you guys, you guys know exactly. So, so here, here's the thing. Lots of people ask me, how do I do that with myself, right? So, you know, so instead of trying to explain it, I wrote a little book called The Best Developer Year that have all the questions that I asked to my mentees on how to, to actually plan your career and, and, and make the things, right? So okay. if you come to this page here, guys, you know, you're going to get the book for free. There's two things going to happen, right, if you, if you come to this page, and hopefully people can see this online. But two things that, I, two things that I, you're going to get, right? One, you're going to get an email from me with the book, right? So the book's for totally for free. The second thing you're going to get is you're going to get an email from me with the book, right? So that's my personal email. You reply to it, you ask questions, and I'm going to help you uh, with uh, anything in your career, right? So, you know, so the way, the way I get motivated is when I get a message like I got this morning, right, saying thank you for helping me because my objective in life is having you having success, right? If you're happy, you know, I've, I've been doing this with photography for many years. Um, you know, I've been, um, that's going to be a story for another day, but I've been doing this with lots of people for lots of e many years and my, my main goal is to help you. So when I come here, and someone here gets bad in their life because I was here, right? So I know Chila, for example, Chila is, 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 she's from Switzerland. She went all the way to Brazil to participate in an event in Brazil. She went to Munich last week to, you know, to, to meet me there. She's here, right? Because I think it works, right, Chila? Yeah. Yes, right? You know, you can grow in your career, right? So that's my goal, to be here to help you in your career, okay? So if I can help you with anything, I'll, I'll be here for the pizza. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Otavio. Thank you, Bruno. Thank I you. think uh, this is a really important topic and very engaging, actually. So we can continue. Sorry for the people uh, on the virtual. By the way, uh, greetings from Alina, because uh, she was following from the live stream. Oh, cool. Earlier. All right. 
So, uh, so she asked was, me just to say, yes. say hi. Was there, was there any question there? No, no question there. No, no. Not, uh, not, uh, no question. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so um, now we have a little gathering here, some pizza in the kitchen, and it's a chance for you to have uh, more questions for Ottavio and Bruno, because I think that we can have some engaged conversation. A big applause, especially to a Dreams of DJO for hosting us and all the tech communities. I'll give you a round of applause, and then we can go to the pizza. Thank you. Okay.